I'd like to show how everybody can help a bit in the uh, tracker with so-called triaging of bug reports. So um, this talk is mostly about or for people that are simple, normal users. If you're a developer and want to know uh, how to handle your bug reports, you can probably leave now because I'm not <laughs> targeting you uh, with this talk. However, you can still talk to me about it. I'm interested. Um, so, what we have this bug tracker thingy for is for software misbehavior, so-called bugs or issues, and for feature and enhancement requests. Um, so, this is something to track bugs in. This is probably the first picture of a real bug in some kind of relay, uh, as we had this before with Grace Hopper. Um, there's many different things or kind of ways or, or, uh, to describe so-called bugs. You can have crashes that the software totally doesn't work anymore. A functionality that things don't work as expected. Uh, you might want to have a new feature. There might be missing or wrong documentation and there are several other categories you might classify bugs in. And for this, Wikimedia has an issue tracking system uh, under this address. Bugzilla Wikimedia Award. And this is a notorious screenshot in case the Wi Fi isn't uh, stable, but I think it is. I'll try later. <laughs> it's not bad right now. <laughs> yeah, not bad. So, uh, how many of you have been to Bugzilla already? Could you put up your hands? Okay. Oh, that's nice. That's about half of you. Okay. Um, I want to give a very basic intro introduction how Bugzilla is organized, or some very basics that are helpful to understand. Um, so the, the highest level structure in Bugzilla are so-called products. So you, for example, have the MediaWiki product, product, which is uh, the basic software running on the Wikimedia service, which provides you a wiki. Um, you have a product called MediaWiki Extensions, where you have all these many extensions like abuse filter or uh, other ones you might use. And there's also a Wikimedia product, which is sometimes a bit confusing, but this really re refers to the server configuration of the servers that you can reach under the Wikimedia org addresses. It's not necessarily uh, the software, but something that has to do with the configuration of the servers. And of course, there's a few others, and if you want to see the list, there's uh, uh, URL with the list of products we have. And the next level below are so-called components. So for example, for the MediaWiki product, there are several components um, by the yeah, functionality, I would say. So just to mention a few, I listed a few here, like for example, database issues, uh, the notification mail. Um, if you try to install MediaWiki and something goes wrong, you might file a bug report for the installer. Um, JavaScript issues, the search doesn't work for you, or uh, your user preferences. Um, there might be something you'd like to see, or that doesn't work. And then uh, developers which are interested in a certain area and work in that area of the code base look at these reports in the component that interests them. Uh, this is how it's basically expected to work. Um, of course, there's different people or groups of people active in Maxilla. So, first of all, you have uh, the users, uh, which are mostly also the reporters, like either Wikimedia users, like Wikipedia and, and the other projects, or um, people that use MediaWiki on their own servers to have a wiki software running. Um, then you have the triaging community. Um, the bug squad, which are people that look on reports and try to get them into a good condition without necessarily fixing them themselves. Uh, you have software developers, uh, you have product managers, and uh, a few Bugzilla technical administrators. The fun part is to kind of uh, find a good balance between the needs of all of them, I guess you could imagine. Um, bug management is an ongoing activity, so it's never going to 
on end as long as there's bugs in the software. And there's not much software out there that is really bug free, so you can imagine. Uh, and feature requests, people will always come up with ideas. So um, this triaging thingy, which was mentioned twice already, uh, refers to improving, cleaning up, and organizing the open bug reports and the enhancement requests in Excel. That's what the term refers to. So the intention of a so-called bug squad, uh, those people that do the triaging, is uh, to help the developers to spend their time actually on developing and doing the code work and not uh, talking or discussing too much with uh, users and reporters on yeah, bad bug reports that miss enough information to proceed. Um, and of course also to help and identify important bug reports and to make sure that they get handled and fixed quickly by the developers. Is it readable? <laughs> I think it is even nice. Um, so these are uh, the open tickets we currently have, but they also include enhancement requests. Um, Maxilla has a few statuses, I'm, I'm going to explain this soon. Um, all these graphs are open tickets, um, and you can see that there's a constant uh, increase of tickets we deal with, which I consider pretty normal because uh, there's always feature requests, and um, very often they don't get closed or fixed because you never have enough developers or manpower, woman power uh, to actually work on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, a quick intro introduction to uh, the life of the bug report, because I already mentioned statuses. Um, at the very beginning, a feature request or a bug report gets filed, so it gets into the unconfirmed status or the new status if you're already an established developer. Um, but by default, I would say unconfirmed. Um, at some point, the bug report might get assigned, which means a developer intends to work on it. Uh, so it's kind of in progress. Um, then what I forgot to update, I just realized, we have a new status, uh, which is patch to review which means somebody has written a patch already to fix the problem and the patch now needs uh, another developer taking a look at it if the approach is correct and fine and then it will get merged into the code repository and will be available to everybody else and on the servers of the media at some point. And then somebody makes a decision and the bug report ends up as resolved. Um, in the best case, resolved fixed because that means that a developer agreed that there is an issue and uh, even fixed it. Uh, in some cases, this can also be, for example, works for me if nobody can really reproduce it uh, because setups might be different. Or won't fix uh, can also happen if the maintainers of uh, the software might even be actively against what was proposed because it might be out of scope and uh, the developer doesn't want to see this. And optionally, um, a reporter or a second person could also verify uh, that the fix that went in or the resolution uh, actually makes sense. And if things uh, break again or things didn't work out, it might get reopened. Does this make sense a little bit? <laughs> Any questions? So the question is who can change the status of the bug report? Um, this is, uh, it, it requires special permissions. Uh, traditionally, uh, we, uh, well, in Wikimedia Vexilla, they've been given out to everybody. But uh, after some uh, abuse and spamming, this was a bit restricted. However, there's still many, many people, and I think all developers can do this, and also many, many other people. Um, so, I want to go a bit more into detail what is triaging. Um, basically, if a report makes sense. <laughs> so, is there enough information provided? Um, for example, are there steps to reproduce? 
uh, is it filed under the right product or component? Because um, if, if you're a person who files the first bug report in Maxilla, uh, you don't know the structure, of course. So you might file it under general unknown, and then a triager or a developer will take a look at it and put it into the right basket, because there uh, the developer will see it, as I explained before. And uh, we have also something called severity and priority. So things that are important or should get uh, fixed quickly, like, for example, if you cannot create new accounts on Wikipedia, uh, then these values need to be set really high, so they get enough attention. Um, the link here um, should cover all of this, how to triage, because it's a triage guide. Um, I think there's still one section that has it to do, but it's uh, pretty complete now, and uh, I recommend if you're interested in this, please give it a read and give me feedback. Probably on the talk page is the best uh, way, or send me an email, but I'm really interested, like, what is unclear, what can we improve to make this easier to help. And most helpful uh, for understanding, uh, to, to understand for triaging is uh, what makes a good bug report, which, um, of course, is the same for everybody who wants to report it, not only for the triagers, so also for the reporters. Um, this has a copyright, so I probably shouldn't put it into public slides. I never do with licenses. Um, but it describes it really well and is not just all the other text that I had in my slides so far. Um, I like this one because I, this is, it describes it pretty well, uh, what you should do. So, um, describe, well, I should probably not read what's there, you can take a look yourself. very often that you have to ask reporters for more information. So there's enough around uh, for developers to take a look at it and try um, to fix it. So these are the questions that probably make the most sense. It's not that you need to ask all these questions all the time. It always depends on the situation. Um, for example, the what we're trying to do and why. I would probably only ask the why if it refers to something design related to understand the intention of the report. Um, but this is still pretty helpful and good um, what to look for and what is helpful as information to developers. And this is also part of this uh, wiki page which explains how to report a good bug report, which I, when I'm a bit more lazy, just link to in the bug reports. Um, to point people at to see here, uh, this report needs way more info and I won't list all the items now and as you're maybe a new reporter, it's uh, worth a read for your future bug report. Um, this is probably standard, but still it's worth to mention. Um, Be sensible, be exact, which can be really helpful if you try to reproduce because there might be a different setup or the person might use a different browser. Um, patient, <laughs> which is sometimes needed, still friendly, and especially listen uh, for the information that might even sometimes be between the lines. So if you want to get started um, with triage and bug reports, um, you create a Bugzilla account, you read the triage guide, which uh, also links to more information, of course, but it's a good and compact start. I mean, you can always extend your knowledge later, but this should be a pretty easy start. Um, and try to understand a little bit the user interface that sometimes people complain about, but I think there's no bug tracker that everybody really loves. It's more like always the smallest evil. Um, so all these fields that you can see in the user interface uh, are explained on that wiki page in case you want to understand them. But in most cases, if you want to get started, it's really not needed to understand everything in Barcelona. Um, when I started, I didn't care about most stuff there. So. 
so they just made it way easier. Um, one useful thing I'd like to mention are uh, keywords. Um, this is kind of like categories across products because as I explained earlier, the main categorization of Excel is via products and components. And of course you sometimes have areas which are cross products. For example, uh, internationalization support, uh, that the code is able to be also displayed in other languages, for example, uh, right to left. Uh, accessibility or uh, performance issues when stuff is running way slower than it should. Um, we have a list of all these keywords uh, centrally. Um, again, when I start triaging in the bug tracker, I pick out the four or five keywords I consider important, and you start living with them, and from time to time you take a look what other ones are there if you see a bug report about a specific area. Um, so this was all pretty Bugzilla centric and, and only, okay, we have the system there and then the reporter comes and uh, files a bug report. But uh, as Wikimedia has uh, lots of wikis, uh, and MediaWiki is a wiki software, of course there's also um, lots of bug reports brought up on um, wiki pages, on forums, on village pumps, uh, on, on the tea house, uh, all these areas. And um, one part of my job and, and of triage is also to make sure that bug reports actually end up in the works below where the developers uh, will see them. So there's village pumps, IRC, mailing lists, and um, there's many places where bug reports could be brought up, and even severe ones. And then you have stuff that is sometimes filed in Bexilla, but um, isn't handled in Bexilla, which may also can make things more complicated. So I just want to mention these two examples that it doesn't happen too often, but um, some requests uh, we have to close in Bexilla as this is not the right place because they should be handled somewhere else. But uh, as long as you can redirect a person to a specific place and not just say, this is not the right place, but I don't tell you where to go, uh, I think it's fine. Um, as you triage and as you want to save some time, um, I wrote some rather hackish uh, Grease Monkey JavaScripts, which provide me some functionality, for example, stock answers, which mean, that means um, there's, there's some, if, if there's some certain patterns of things or situations that happen quite often, I um, wrote myself a few scripts for, at least in Firefox framework, I'm not sure how, how good the GSMD support in other browsers is, um, which allow me to save some time. Um, I should probably try to show this. So, So, um, for example, this is the, the usual way that uh, this law looks, at least for me, hopefully else for you. Um, so you see all these field, fields up there, but um, basically what, what you need is, is the product, the component, here is the status list uh, that I told you before about. And here is priority and uh, severity. And you say this has highest and critical. So this was an issue, uh, just as an example. Um, gadget settings couldn't be changed anymore after the media wiki software was updated. So um, what happened is somebody of the community uh, reported it. And Madma Rex, also of our community, he found even a duplicate of this one. And um, here in the second comment, he also set it to highest priority. So it got some attention by the Wikimedia folks and was uh, pretty quickly confirmed and fixed. Hold on, I think you might want to clear up that you, the, the history thing you mentioned about how he set it to highest priority, how that's actually on a different page. Um, yes, um, so someone has said that uh, you cannot see that highest priority was set by uh, Bartosz at that time. Uh, because there is a history link here. However, I'm pretty soon going to kill... No, well, I'm not going to kill this history link, but I'm going to show this inside of the comments anyway, because uh, by default, looking on two different pages for this information doesn't make any sense. Um, what I wanted to show now, what I wanted to show now is uh, switching on the Grease Monkey script and reloading the page. 
Um, and going down again, where the field is to add a new comment, um, I have here my set of stock answers that I use. And if I click once, uh, it automatically adds some text. <laughs> so this is a trick, you know. Um, and can do, can do lots of other stuff. For example, um, marking it as a duplicate, and it automatically also sets the status down there to resolve the duplicate. All this kind of stuff, which can save you some time if you really triage your logs. And um, Bugzilla gets about 300 new tickets per week, so there is enough stuff to look at. I, I bet most people here are curious what happens when you click on rant. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you want to know what's on RAND? Let's see. Oh. This is getting very personal. Back to the slides. Um, I welcome patches uh, or whatever you need or whatever patterns you see and. I'm not really a programmer, so this code also probably welcomes any kind of cleanups, cleanups or refactoring. But it works for me, you know. So to summarize this a bit, um, in very short, I normally tell people, use good judgment, and if you're unsure, ask first on, on IRC, or just add a comment, I think, blah, 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 uh, before actually doing it. I mean, we have be bold in Wikimedia, uh, as a slogan, but um, just ask. I mean, normally there's always somebody around on RSC who's willing to help and then give a second uh, opinion or something. So yeah, the, the central uh, wiki page where you find information about bug management and triaging is on the MediaWiki org slash wiki slash uh, bug management. There you find a triage guide. The triage guide also links to easy tasks and entry points. For example, ways uh, how you can get started, because quite often when there's people like, hey, I want to help, but where shall I start? And it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem in free and open source software uh, projects, that it's like, do whatever you want, yeah, but tell me something. So there's a list of things, for example, you can triage the latest incoming tickets, which were filed in the last 24 hours. You could take a look at uh, the product or component that interests you a lot. For example, if you're into email notifications, just take a look at the tickets for email notifications. And there's lots of other ways. For example, also updating uh, older tickets. Because, of course, there's always more tickets than uh, anybody will ever fix. So there's also older tickets that might have been fixed on the way, but nobody closed them because nobody knew that they existed. So there's always enough stuff to do. Um, and though I said uh, maybe ask first, still don't be afraid because uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes. So that's how you get started. Um, yes, question time, or uh, whatever comments you have, or um, if you are not here and questions come to your mind later, uh, drop me an email, um, find me on IRC chat, or I also have like every, I think, six or eight weeks uh, IRC office hours where you can just find out about the latest stuff, what's happening, um, where I answer questions, where I discuss or explain plans. Um, but all the plans uh, and uh, weekly status updates you can also find on the back management page because I try to do this transparently as far as possible. All right. All right, we should have a few minutes for questions for the next plenary. Um, the question is, uh, bug reports in other languages in English? Um, Bugzilla has an English-only interface. The software itself itself allows translations, however, I don't consider the quality very good. So it's unfortunately English-only. What I recommend is um, either first asking in your community to get a translation, and then let a the person file it on your behalf, or you copy and paste the text into Bugzilla. Um, or, um, I don't have a real problem with other languages, however, it makes communication normally harder in the bug tracker. So I normally uh, use a translation service to at least get an idea what the bug report is about and um, pass the translation again if it makes sense. And if not, I really have to say, please write in English or uh, ask somebody in the community to translate it for you. 
So I noticed that there, like in some bug trackers, um, that uh, they have like these social features where they let you like plus one or upvote or something like that a, a bug, so that you know bugs that a lot of people are having get an attention, and you don't have like these streams of B two. Um, is there anything like that planned for the system, or do you see any future for that? Um, so the question is about social features like. Um, plus one, or um, I'm also affected by this, I guess, and, and just voting basically for popularity of the report. Um, Bugzilla has a feature called votes. It's not really visible because it, the, the link is pretty hidden in the bug report. You can add uh, a vote, only voting plus, not voting minus, not downvoting, um, to bug reports. However, um, it's only enabled for some products in Wikimedia Bugzilla. And not in all cases, it's, it's not always clear how this can be used as an input for the developers. So we need to set priorities. For example, I know that the Wikidata team does consider votes as one source of input um, to set their own priorities for the developer. Um, but in general, the, the Bexilla interface is not really good for this. So it's nothing I really want to advertise. Um, and what I'd love to see, but what's not the case, for example, another bug tracker, the launchpad.net, they have uh, a button which says, I am affected by this too, which uh, avoids all these comments which uh, create bug man notifications. This, this would be something nice, but uh, I'm not aware currently of any plans uh, by the Bugzilla developers, which are upstream and mostly with Mozilla, because uh, they are heading the Bugzilla development. I don't currently see any plans to focus on this. However, they're planning at least an updated user interface. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, that concludes this session. Um, according to the schedule, there is no break between this session and the closing plenary, which is the demo of Wikimania 2014 in London. So pack up and then head over to the Jockey Club. Thank you.